Do you feel like you're not creative or stuck with no original ideas? I feel like there are so many existing ideas, what on earth could I possibly add that hasn't already been said? But then I found Austin Cleon's Steal Like an Artist and it promised to unlock my creativity. So let's get into what I found and whether or not it delivered on this promise. First off, what is originality? It's something we all strive for, but have we ever truly stopped to think about what it means? For example, none of us are born knowing. We learn by copying and imitating those around us, like our parents. We learn to walk, we learn to read and write over time by watching them and imitating them. In order to copy people, we need to study people. Effectively, we are what we consume. So we need to surround ourselves with people that we admire, respect and love so we can learn from them, both in person, post-Covid, and online. We should pay attention to what they're talking about, what they're doing and what they're linking to. Austin makes a really good suggestion that we should create our own equivalent of a family tree. So whilst we can't choose our families, unfortunately, we can choose our mentors. The idea is that you find somebody that you love and want to study and then go and study them. And then you find three people that they love and go and study them. And you repeat this process until you end up with this giant, huge, amazing tree of knowledge that you can learn from. Another way of learning is by reading as much as possible. We should start to build our own library. It's so important for us to educate ourselves, to be curious and ask questions and Google everything. Over time, we'll start to develop and build our second brain. But it's so important to not become a hoarder and become a collector. Now, in this digital age, it's so easy for us to just clip everything we see and save it for later. But what we should really be doing is only collecting and saving those articles or those pieces of work that really resonate with us and that mean something to us. We need to be authentic. Remember, rubbish in equals rubbish out. So we start to learn by copying others, but then we need to take that one step further and start to emulate them, not just imitate them. We don't want to just look like our heroes, we want to see like them. We want to understand how their minds work. Kobe Bryant, for example, tried to copy his heroes, but realised he didn't have the same physique as them, so he took those moves and adapted them and made them his own. As humans, we're highly unlikely to be able to create a perfect copy anyway, so we should try and use that to our advantage and create something unique. Even better, we could take something that we love and transform it by adding something that only we could add. Now that all sounds great in theory, but most of us have imposter syndrome creep up on us when it's time to actually take some action. Right now, I'm wondering who the hell I am to be telling you any of this. Now, imposter syndrome is defined as a psychological phenomenon in which people are unable to internalize their accomplishments. I'm wondering how I have it when there's no accomplishments to try and internalize. So we have two options. We can either pretend to be something we're not until we are, or we can pretend to be making something until we are actually making something. In other words, fake it till you make it. Okay, so that's one hurdle overcome. But now you might be asking, what do I even write or talk about? And the usual answer to this is write what you know or talk about what you know. But what Austin is saying is that you should write or talk about what you like. In his example, when he was younger, he went to see Jurassic Park and he loved it so much that he was craving a sequel. So he wrote his own, what is now called fan fiction, and he loved that story. Years later, the sequel did come out and it didn't live up to his expectations. So the moral here is that you should do the work that you want to see done. And this is how a lot of YouTubers got started. They saw a gap in the market of something that they wanted to see, so filled it themselves. Or saw other creators and thought that they could do something very similar or even better. But what I will say is that you do not have to turn every single passion you have into a career or monetize it. Keep some back for yourself. These are things that you should just do for fun, to recharge, to relax, with no pressure. And you don't need to cut any of them out. The whole point is that they should intertwine and help you in other areas of your life. So that's hurdle two overcome. Now how do you get people to listen? Easy. Do good work and share it in public. You learn by sharing with others, so open up your processes and invite others in. Learn in public. It's so easy to do now with the internet. You have Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. 
and all the other platforms that the kids use these days. If you really don't want to reveal your secrets, then share your dots, but don't connect them. But to be honest, it's likely you're not a magician. It's good to reveal things. Also, you don't have to share everything, just snippets, which is probably better because let's be honest, people don't need to know when you're going to do a poo. Ali. Anyway, I finish off the writing session at 12.17 when it's time for a poo. I'm out of the loop by 12.40 and I'm ready to start my second wave of writing for this video. Everybody wants to become famous overnight, but we should only want that attention when we're doing really good work. Until then, we should take advantage of the fact that there's no pressure on us and we can do what we want. We should take risks and make mistakes. We should practice and experiment. There's no public image to manage and we'll never get that freedom again. So we should be okay with slow growth. Now, even after all of that, I'm sure some of you are thinking that you're either still scared or you're still not ready. And I can totally relate. But one of the biggest takeaways from this is that you should just start. It's all about learning as you go, putting in the reps and being consistent. Now I started a podcast back in May last year and I didn't have any idea what I was doing, but I learned as I went along and I'm so glad I did because I could have spent months deliberating over it, trying to perfect it, but I learned so much more by doing and putting into practice than I ever could have done by just thinking about it. Now there's an example from The Art of Fear that really, really nails this point. So there was a group of students, and I'm sure you've heard this example, but it was a pottery class and there was a group of students and the teacher split the students into two groups. So group one was to be graded at the end of the year on the quality of the work they produced and group two would have been graded at the end of the year by the quantity. Long story short, basically, the students that produced the most quantity had the better work at the end of the year because what they were doing is they were constantly iterating, repeating and learning from what they were doing, not even consciously, but because they were producing so much, it just naturally happened. And the people in group one that were thinking and overthinking probably didn't come up with the same goods. So the moral of the story is please, please, please just start. In fact, it's one of the most pieces, given pieces of advice that I get from people that come and join me on the podcast. It's either start or they wish they'd started earlier, which is exactly the same thing. So I absolutely implore you to please, if you're thinking about something, just go and start. I promise you, you will regret not starting more than you regret starting. So bringing this back full circle, it turns out that I am creative and I'm never going to have a truly original idea because there's no such thing as a truly original idea. Everything is a remix of an existing idea, which also means that I have no excuse to not put out content, but neither do you. And I also feel like I've been given permission to put out the content that I want to put out. So for anybody out there needing permission to start creating, here is my permission to you. Also, share this video with people in your life who need permission to start creating. Give them permission. And feel free to steal like an artist whatever you want from this video. Just go and create. Bye guys.